You have no idea how many. You have no idea what's coming. We smell Christian blood. We, we are waiting for our day. And when the call is given, millions of us will be released. And they looked at me and said, you believe in revivals and you believe in Pentecost and the power of God. You believe in all that. We believe in the Black Awakening. Do I look at you or I look here? It's up to you. Okay. So, all right. What is the Black Awakening? Um, it's related to the Red Horse Prophecy in Revelation. It's related to uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 when it says about the day of the Lord, the Parousia, that day will not occur until the apocalypse of the Antichrist and the apostasia, the word rebellion or revolt. That's all really defined in the prophecy of the red horse but here's where the term came from and why i used it purposely when i started dealing with ritually abused individuals and then we dealt with military oriented highly trained you know program shooters and assassins inside of them when we began to deal with them i dealt with someone from fort bragg for quite a while and a few others we we're sitting in a lake conneaut lake they reached over and ripped open my shirt to see if i was wired if i was wiring and recording them and they were the most sophisticated satanic warrior type person they knew five six languages they knew the ancient twilight languages they knew how to conjure they knew they knew how to use belteshari okwam all these old pictish languages of the druids to summon they were they are the real luciferian they've been through many human sacrificial things so they sat there to tell me some of those things what they've been involved with how they sacrifice a human. I'm listening to all this stuff from them. And then they said to me, you have no idea, Russ, how many of us there are out there. How many satanic, cho they, they use the term, chosen ones. Uh, you have no idea how many. You have no idea what's coming. Um, we smell Christian blood. We, we are waiting for our day. And when the call is given, millions of us will be released and they looked at me and said you believe in revivals and you believe in Pentecost and the power of God you believe in all that we believe in the Black Awakening a multi-continental release of power to activate the program demonized where they've weaponized the demonic powers to these super soldiers are they waiting for a specific time to unleash their power yeah they are because they have to do it at the moment the Antichrist is, like you read in 2 Thessalonians 2, that it's caught the echo, the restrainer is holding back the apocalypse of the Antichrist, the unveiling in his movement. So right now he's held restrained. Soon as the, he who restrains is removed, soon as that occurs, we have White Horse, the release of the Antichrist. Instantly, we have the release of the Red it says the whole earth and all of a sudden it doesn't give the details um, but all of a sudden on a global scale people are released to begin to and the Greek word is svadzo slaughter begin to slaughter people it's used of animal ritual butchery to begin to slaughter individuals that's exactly how they defined it to me back in the 90s say the United States remember the shooter in Vegas uh, look what he did Look what that guy did, okay? Notice what, what would happen if 10,000 of them were like, or like Colorado homes or like Jared in Arizona. What if 10,000 of them were released in one week? That's their, that's their plot plan and biblical prophecies ahead of that to say here is what is gonna happen. And from that, a you know global monetary collapse. And from that, that's all that chaos is coming. So Revelation 13, a whole new order with the Antichrist can come. Wow. Scary stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Shalom. Rakata Yehawa, Rakata Yehawa Shah. Call Hello Yehawa by Shemi Hawa Shah by Shemi Kakwa Dash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that tell us his truth. And much respect to the Yakim at the labor and his work. And also to the believers get across the four corners of the earth, the whole fake elect. To USA. Shalom. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 12, and verse 1, NLT. 
It says, at that time, Michael, the archangel, who stands guard over your nation, will arise. Then there will be a time of anguish greater than any since nations first came into existence. But at that time, every one of your people, the elect of Israel, whose name is written in the book, will be rescued. So according to Daniel 12 and 1, as we understand that this is going to Jacob's trouble, pursuant to Jeremiah 30 and 7, uh, within the latter days that we're coming into, it's going to be so bad that the archangel, you know, the top angel on the Yahweh is going to have to stand up and fight, okay, for the elect of the nation of Israel. That's how bad it's going to get that an outside force, an angelic being, is going to have to step in and fight to save the elect from the wrath of Esau and what this man has coming. Because everything is geared towards exterminating you Israelites. This is what this man has been in the lab, you know, creating all these weapons for, you know, which is for that great day of uh, trying to get rid of you Israelites, man. He has many, many tools that we don't even know about, along with these super soldiers who they have pretty much incorporated with this AI technology to uh, be superhuman. Okay. And they have one objective, and that's to kill. Okay, these movies like The Terminator and uh, Universal Soldier are not just movies that are made up. You know, these movies actually depict, you know, how they want to bring in the NWO in these latter days. So Jake has no clue of what's coming. The raft is coming, pursuing the Revelation 12 and 12, where the devil is going to come down, you know, with great wrath. Great wrath. And we know that, <laughs> you know, these words don't really do the judgment any justice. Because it's going to far exceed you know, what we can even imagine. All right, the terror that the Lord's going to bring through Esau. So yeah, great wrath because he understands that he has but a short time to rule. And those days are quickly approaching. So this uh, article from the Sun, it says, You're terminated. All right, Vladimir Putin warns of future sci-fi superhuman soldiers more destructive than nuclear bombs who feel no pain. And as you heard that guy open the clip say that, uh, you know, just imagine, you know, one guy, that guy in Vegas who I think he killed like 50 people doing that concert. Just imagine like what, 10,000 or more of them, okay, are roaming the streets, just mowing down people. You know, that's that's pretty much what they want. And of course, they're going to be in you Jake's neighborhoods, man, mowing you down. You see, this is going to be way worse than 70 AD or any other time, as the scripture just said. So Putin is one of a sci-fi superhuman soldiers, you know, more destructive than nuclear bombs, who feel no fear or pain. And it reminds me of uh, Second Edward 16 and 71, where they should be like madmen sparing none. We'll just grab that real quick. Second Edward 16 and 71. Matter of fact, verse 70, for there should be in every place and in the next cities, a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. It's talking about the Israelites. All right, the guy that said they can't wait to get their hands on the Christians. <laughs> They're waiting for blood, man. It says, they shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord, man. Okay? So, these soldiers are going to be equipped with AI technology, you know, brain chips, that uh, are going to control their moods, okay, their feelings. They're not going to feel fear or pain. They're going to be super enhanced. And they're going to have one mission. That's to exterminate your Israelites, man. So Putin knows what's up, all right? He's somewhat in on the NWO. Although they're going to turn their back on, you know, America. They're somewhat in on the NWO. And he understands the, uh, you know, the plot and the reason behind these, uh, these super soldiers that are being created. Also, China is in the works is creating you know, these as well, man. So let's read some of this real quick. It says, Vladimir Putin has claimed genetically modified super soldiers worse than a nuclear bomb could soon become a reality. The strongman Russian president spoke to a crowd of students about their prospect of an army of trained killers and capable of feeling pain or fear, much like the characters in 1992 action movie Universal Soldier. Okay. So, this is literally the sword that's being sharpened, 
to make a sore slaughter, you know, uh, uh, to you Israelites, man, who refused to return back until you held by Shemoshah. So Ezekiel 21 in verse 9, it says, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus said the Lord, that's what we're telling you, Thus said the Lord, you have by Shemoshah, Say, a sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. We're telling you Esau is coming for you Israelites. It is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth? Yeah, we shouldn't be in a joyous spirit right now, understanding that judgment is coming. You see? It says, It can tempt the rod of my son as every tree, and he had given it to be furbished, that it may be handled. The sword is sharpened, and it is furbished to give it into the hand of the slayer. And that's ultimately Yahweh Shai, who was going to swing this sword at your Israelites. Okay? It says, Cry. Matter of fact, before we go on, let's go ahead and get, um, I think it's Zechariah, the 14th chapter. Okay? And we'll start at verse 2. It says, For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. It's speaking about your Israelites. Okay? So that's the Lord, you know, uh, with this sword in his hand. He gonna, he's going to gather these nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, the concentration camps, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Okay? It says, Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the, in the day of the battle. And he's going to defend the elect then. All right? So let's go back to Ezekiel 21 and 12. It says, Cry and howl, son of man, for it shall be upon my people. Jacob's trouble. It shall be upon all the princes of Israel. Terrors by reason of the sword shall be upon my people. Smite therefore upon thy thigh. Okay? So terrors are coming due to the wrath of Esau. Okay? When you go to the book of Jeremiah, the 30th chapter, and the prophets all saw visions of the end. They saw the terror. All right, they were getting sick. Okay, Andrew said, War is me, war is me. Who would have lived me in those days? All right, uh, Habakkuk, I've heard that speech and was afraid. So they saw these visions, man. They seen the terror that the Lord's going to bring upon this earth, you know, for his wickedness. As you get in the book of 2nd Andrew 8 and 50, you know, many great miseries shall be done to them in a latter time that shall dwell in the world. Because they have they have walked in great pride, man. So great miseries are coming. So Jeremiah 30 and verse 5 says, For thus said the Lord Yahweh Bashimashai, we have heard a voice of trembling, of fear, and not of peace. As ye now see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loin, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into pale. And so grown men are going to be in the state of a woman. You know, with their hands on the lawns, like in severe pain, you know, crying, howling. Okay. Verse 7, it says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Okay. The elect will be saved out of this, this madness. Okay. From Esau, because ultimately it's the Lord that's swinging his sword. So if he says that he's going to protect his elect, then he's going to do that. Okay, let's go to um, Psalm 124 and 1. It says, If it had not been the Lord Yahweh by Hashem al who was on our side, now may Israel say, If it had not been the Lord Yahweh by Hashem al who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Okay, and um, when you think about the time of the deliverance from ancient Egypt, from Pharaoh. Okay, the Lord calls Pharaoh and his chariots to chase after the uh, Israelites across the sea. And um, the Israelites made across just in time, and the waters collapsed and drowned Pharaoh, you know, within the sea. So, that same thing is going to happen this time, all right? It's going to be a dramatic deliverance, you know, from the hands of our enemies. Okay, when they come in like a flood, Isaiah 59 and 19, and we'll get that next. But it's going to be a dramatic deliverance from Yahweh by Shemel Shah to where you're going to know that it was nothing but the Lord that saved it. Okay? So again, Psalm 124 
and two, if it had not been the Lord Yahweh by Shemasha who was on the side when man rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us, the stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Okay, so Esau is equated unto the proud waters. Okay, he's coming in with like a flood. But we understand that the Lord stayed, pretty much stayed those proud waters back in ancient Egypt. And he's going to do the same thing this time. Okay, spiritually with Esau. Okay. Seven, our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. Okay. The trap of Esau. The bird catcher. The snare is broken and we are escaped. It says, our help is in the name of the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Shah, who made heaven and the earth. So anyone who is not calling on Yahweh by Shemel Shah, then you are not going to be rescued. You are not going to escape. That scripture say, the righteous have scarcely escaped. Roughly paraphrasing. Okay, but our help is in the name of Yahweh by Shemel Shah. So Psalm 125. And one says, They that trust in the Lord Yahweh by Shemel Shah should be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abide forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, Speaking about these governments, okay, we just got in with Zechariah 14 chapter. He's going to cause all nations to come against Jerusalem. He says, so the Lord Yahweh by Shemashah is around about his people from henceforth, even forever. For the ride of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. That's the Lord holding back those proud ways, okay, from touching the elect. He says, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. And it's why we got to pray for, you know, uh, that the Lord does not lead us into temptation and to keep us from evil, man. Okay. Four, it says, do good, O Lord, Yahweh by Shemel Shah, to those that be good and to them that are upright in their hearts and their minds. As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, uh, the Lord, Yahweh by Shemel Shah, shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace shall be upon Israel. So throughout all this chaos. If we remain faithful to Yahweh Bashim al Shah, then he will remain faithful to us. As uh, we're going to see a lot of terrible things in these upcoming days. All right? They're speaking about power outages. And, uh, you know, soon after that, all hell is going to break loose and that's going to pay way, okay, for um, Esau to come with his sword, all right? His teeth, his military. But the Lord said, wait, he's not, he's not going to give us over, you know, uh, uh, as prey to that teeth, every paraphrasing. Okay, so the last scripture, Isaiah 59 and 19, it says, So shall they fear the name of the Lord Yahweh by Shemel Shah from the west. Okay, that's what we're doing right now. And his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord Yahweh shall lift up a standard against him. And we're about to see some miraculous works. You know, when these troops come in, we're going to see the power of Yahweh by Shemel Shah. All right, as he calls uh, Pharaoh and his chariots to approach unto the Israelites, just so the Lord can show himself, man. So these things must be. And the Lord has gave Esau all this technology so that he can be confounded, you know, in a day when the Lord lifts up this standard against him. Okay. Verse 20. And the Redeemer, Yahweh Shah, shall come to Zion, the elect, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob. Okay. The ones that turn and repent back into Yahweh by Shemel Shah uh, through this testimony. These, these are who the Lord is going to save. You see? So the, the days of trouble are, are at hand. As you get in 2 Nathan 16 and 74. Hear, O ye my beloved, said the Lord, Yahweh Shah. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. To be not afraid and neither doubt. For the Most High Yahweh by Shemel Shah is your guide. G-U-I-D-E And the God of them who keep my commandments and precepts Said the Lord power So let not your sins weigh you down And let not your iniquities lift up themselves Yeah so You know we can't let ourselves get down Because of our shortcomings But we got to continue to have faith All the way up until the end And that's going to lead to salvation Right That's why Yahweh Shah was made a sacrifice for the elect So we might not be judged according to the flesh But according to the spirit So we got to keep the faith until the end Okay, in order to be saved. So the Lord will guide his elect during these times, the ones that do believe. So Lord willing, you're edified until the next time. I say Shalom.